All right. Hi, everybody. Now, in my last video, I talked about... Actually, not my last video, the one before that. I talked about, you know, tropes in woodworking videos. And one trope I failed to mention were tool talk videos. Tool talk videos to makers, whether they're woodworkers, blacksmiths, or whatnot, are the equivalent of a long-running TV show's clip episode. It's basically what you do when you have nothing to talk about, but you got to put something out. So, they're just re really cheap, really unoriginal, and, you know, they're, they're just done to do them. With that being said, let's get to this video all about saws. Anyway, as you know, I rec recently purchased this saw. It's a 26-inch crosscut saw. Uh, I paid $8.99 for it at my local independent hardware store. And I got it because this saw here, which I had been using, had finally dulled out. And I, you can't resharpen these teeth, at least not without a slip stone. And even then it'd be a, more work than I'd want. Now, when I started using it, I immediately had issues with it. Actually, even before. It, it feels very whippy. Like, it, it just... It just wants to whip around. Also, you can see where it's very... Narrow. It's a very narrow blade. Now compare this to my my actual work crosscut saw. You can see this is a much wider blade. It doesn't have the whip. At least it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel as whippy as that one does. And when I try to use it, I immediately felt it. Is the teeth were very grabby. You know. And here I'll show you what I mean. Like I said, this is my this is my crosscut saw. This is what I use for for you know my just regular work. See? No problems. It just went right through, you know, could easily start it. Here is the saw I was using at, just to break down lumber whenever I bought it. And as a, just a rough cut saw. And remember, this here is dull. All right. Once again. And there is another guy who I saw. He has a woodworking channel and he kind of has a shtick similar to mine, except he has much better production values. Actually cares about his end product. Um, and he was reviewing one of these saws. And I tell you what, it, it was like one of watching those really bad infomercials. He's like, You know, it's like, dude, come on. So, a lot of the tool reviews you see, they're hyped up. But now, look at this. As you can see, it bent, it grabbed. And this is actually even better. It's mellowed out. Um, because I, I've used it when I first tried it, it, it just it just really like I had to do s several backwards cuts just to get it to start. Because uh, if I just tried it like that, it would just bounce it around. So the imp it's actually improved. Um, cro uh, ripping with it, like I said, because it's so narrow of a blade it is i had to control it almost like a turning saw 
In fact, I, just for crafts and giggles, I want to see if I could actually make a radius. And so I cut this piece out with it. And while it's not, you know, the world's tightest radius, you can definitely see that is an arc. So I was able to do it. So the handle, this part's good. This part I like. This part is comfortable in the hand. This part I don't. It feels weird against my finger. Now granted, there aren't too many modern saws that have really good handles. Um, you can see how large this handle is compared to my hand. Um, say with this one. Um, it's still really, really large compared to my actual hand. Um, but th this is a more comfortable than this one. So, I thought maybe I would... Now, when I was at my local A store, I saw that they had this uh, spare um, handle for sale um, and these used to be made um, because well handles get broken so instead of throwing your saw out you just buy the handle you know lay out your mark your nut holes and you know attach it and you're good as gold and it's very comfortable I like it a lot so I took this off and was planning on just putting this on and I saw what some of the problem was. And I tried to attach this. The way this is angled at the back. Is putting more of the direction of force. In line with the teeth. And you might think that's what you want. But if you look at really vintage saws. Or new premium saws. The handles are actually kind of up. And tilt it down to, so that the force is in two directions this way and this way so if you want to figure the force would be coming in at two angles because not yeah you'll be pushing down but gravity will be assisting you because these are Western saws and Western saws cut on the push stroke so gravity is going to help you but the point of having it also go down is that it keeps the saw in the wood. So it's moving it back as well as moving it down, which creates a much more efficient cut. By having this angle the way it is and putting more of the direction of force in line with the teeth, you're not getting that downward pressure. Um, also, new saw teeth tend to be a bit grabby just out of the box not as grabby as that was that was ridiculous like I said it's mellowed a lot um, but yeah so what my so what I'm gonna try to do is try to actually rework this saw a bit first I'm gonna I want to recut this angle so I can attach this so I get more of that, you know, vector force approach, where it's not only going here, but down as well. I also want to cut, bring this back. Like this is a 20 inch saw, this is 26 inch. So, once I'm done reworking the back, bring this maybe in to its 20 inch as well. That way, there will be less length for it to whip around and it will be thicker too so it will give more of a consistent cut um, this is a really big project and this was $8.99 this was $6.99 um, I'm gonna have to get proper split nuts like this here um, they're, they're going to be a little expensive. So, if it works out, I'm still going to have, this is still going to be like a 
30 to $40 saw when it's all the work and everything's into it. But I, if I do everything right, it should be an excellent performing saw. But just to get, let's talk about saws a little bit more. This saw here is from 1986. It's got three regular nuts and then the badge, which is also a nut. So you got four points of attachment from handle to blade. The handle is very comfortable. Like I said, big, but you know, people have different size hands, so you know this might work for people. Um, but now you get to this saw here is from 1999, so about 13 years later. You look at the two handles; the shape is exactly the same. Okay, but you now only have three points of attachment. The badge is now just carved in. This saw is from 2017. At least that's the, the date on the sleeve. So, this is... That's 99, so 18 years later. It's a plastic handle. It's got a lot of hollow spots. It still has three points of contact, but they're just regular screws. Okay. Like I said, it's narrower. It whips a lot. It's a much different beast. Now this here, uh, let's see, I forgot to look. This here is fairly new too. Um, it came out a few years ago. Uh, let's see, look at the date, look at the date, find the date. 2013, so this is actually a, an older saw than this. But this is their professional line, Fat Max. This is made to be taken to an actual job site and used on the job. Decent handle, nice thickness. You know, has a good width, good thickness. Really solid. Not doesn't whip as bad. But non resharpened old teeth. And yeah, the handle is a little bit different than this, mainly because the geometry of these teeth are so different that having the blade in line does actually help. Because with this type of tooth geometry, you actually want the force in line with the teeth. But still, it's a disposable item that despite it being made for professionals, it's an item that's meant to be thrown in the trash. And three points of contact with just regular old screws. Okay. And the reason for that is in the old days, everything had to be handmade. Had to be. There were no, there were no power tools. So the tools had to be designed to be used all day, every day by... Workmen in, you know, furniture making shops to construction sites. And even when power tools were introduced uh, around the turn of the last century, it would still be to really the 1940s, 1950s to they really started showing up on a regular basis on job sites because up until then there was no way to run power to the job site. By the 40s, 50s, and you're now getting, there's more electrical lines, you got mobile generators, so you can, and power tools are now small enough and light enough, and but still powerful enough 
to do all the things you need them to do. But still, hand tools were still very common. When I when I went to Votech, to when I took, went to a vocational school for carpentry and cabinetry, art and uh, back in back in the early um, 90s, our textbook covered hand tools, and it covered rip saws, cross cut saws, tenon saws, uh, smoothing planes, jack planes, router planes, shoulder planes. And these were still things that you were that would st you would still see on the job site. Not as often, and they wouldn't be used like they were. But still, you know, you it was still fairly reasonable to go to a job site and still see a brace and bit or a hand plane or a hand saw. That's why even these here are still made to a really high standard and work exceedingly well but now that once you get into the the battery age and there's power everywhere and you know time's money time is money you know contractors get paid by the job the faster you can put up a house the quicker you can get to the next one hand tools don't cut it and cap and cabinet shops I mean cabinet shops now have CNC machines so you know even the old power machinery is kind of on the outs um, but so the only market left is the homeowner and even that mark is drying up now as machines and power tools have become cheaper and more powerful for the homeowner. Um, there's not the demand for even decent quality. Um, you still might go to people's houses, you know, homeward workers, um, DIYers and see a hand saw, possibly a hand plane, but they're going to be there because they figured, well, I guess I should buy one, and I'll just hang somewhere. And yes, we did have a hand tool revival there about 10 years ago. That's pretty much over now. So, good quality, high quality hand tools have now become a boutique market that can cost hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars. And, yeah. But, there is hope. If, if we persevere, if we show there's still a market for good quality hand tools and keep our eyes open we can keep this going um, but yeah so anyway that's the Stanley Universal saw it has a lot of issues yeah, it's not as bad as it was the teeth have mellowed out but it still has a lot of issues I'm going to try to rework this and see what type of job I have. You know, hopefully I can turn into a, a really good saw. But I still got my main cross cut and my main rip. Um, and you can still find these on the secondary market. But once I get this going... Unless I completely botch it, I'll do a video where I talk about it and hopefully, you know, explain to you the steps I did to get there. Then you can do it as well. But anyway, that's my filler video. See you next time.